My project was focused on understanding community structure in uh, two different bodies of water. One was the Gulf of Mexico and one was the Atlantic Ocean just off the west coast of Africa. One of the things that was so wonderful about this experience was being able to both be back at Lamont, uh, crunching data in uh, the lab, and also working out on the boat. On the research vessel you're able to interact with scientists and with other students like myself and from them to see the way that my research fit within a larger context. My research is just one piece in the very large puzzle of trying to understand the composition of the oceans. I have always been interested in environmental economics. I'm really interested in the marriage between um, business as usual and sustainability and how we can reconcile the two of them to achieve the outcomes desired by the Sustainable Development Goals. My project is about implementing a potential carbon pricing plan here at Columbia. The most important thing I've learned was that there are so many moving pieces to implementing a carbon price um, anywhere, and it differs between the public sphere and the private sphere. This has been a wonderful opportunity for, for my studies. I think that because of the coursework at, at Columbia, and particularly in the Sustainable Development Program, it's really fostered a um, critical faculty within the students. We're able to analyze um, all different types of data sets, all different types of mediums um, across the discipline. And I think that that combined with the project management that we had to learn in this thesis really is are what enabled the skills for a leader. The project was about learning and understanding the practices of sustainability in Israel, especially what regards to water management, waste management, agriculture, and energy. The most important knowledge I gained was learning how Israel went from being a country with water scarcity to a country with water surplus. I intend to return to Colombia, my country, where these best practices and sustainability are much needed. This funding is vital. It allows students with interest aligned with the Earth Institute's mission, like me, to travel and gain knowledge in order to apply it in the short and midterm. My project was adapting agriculture to climate today for tomorrow, and the project was led by the International Research Institute for Climate and Society, based at the Earth Institute at Columbia University. The main focus of the project was researching climate threats to food security in six countries around the world, one of which was Bangladesh. I spent 12 weeks on the ground in Bangladesh performing research, primarily on the rice value chain and also financial instruments. This really put a, a face to, to climate change for me and understanding that if we can invoke mechanisms that can provide information to such vulnerable communities, it can really have a huge, huge impact. My research looks into the ways that we can engage communities in conversations about climate change adaptation without alienating them ideologically. My research examines different communities that are different politically, ideologically, and demographically, and looks at the ways that they communicate and think about climate change, vulnerability, and resilience. There's something really interesting that has kind of engaged me during my research has been the question of where people draw the line of questioning. Um, for some people, um, knowing that tides will be higher and knowing that storms will be destruct more destructive is enough. They don't need to know what caused it, they just need to know how to solve it. For other people, these questions provoke more thoughts about what are the root causes and where and how do we lay the blame. Navigating those two doctrines has been a really interesting ex like ethical exercise that my research has really engaged me in. Climate change, uh, as we know, is going to have a lot of effects on human societies, some of which we understand better uh, than others. One of the effects that we're uh, better understanding over the last decade or so with a lot of uh, new empirical research is that climate change is likely to have uh, a significant mortality effect on human societies. Uh, so what my project is doing is I'm taking uh, something called an integrated assessment model and I'm using that model to try to understand how uh, climate change is likely to affect uh, human population levels uh, and the mortality rate within that model. This project really forced me to really dig under the hood of the DICE model, this integrated assessment model, to understand all of these dynamics. 
For my urban planning master's thesis, I had the opportunity to study Rwanda, and it was part of the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. What I was looking at was the rural planning aspect that went into the post-conflict setting within Rwanda. Rwanda has a really fascinating returning refugee resettlement program. It's worth study for other countries who have significant refugee populations. For example, Syria, you know, in 10 or 15 years when there are a lot of potentially returning refugees coming back to Syria, how does that country handle that population and that, and that population influx? And Rwanda is a very interesting study in how that worked and for the most part worked well. My project was based in the UN program, Urban Water Innovation Network, and basically UN is a group of uh, researchers, academics, professionals around the country that gather together to basically discuss and try to solve water-related challenges in the United States. So through UN, I was placed at Brooklyn College working with Professor Cherrier and Professor Smith, and with their help, I basically developed a product to help clean water uh, before it is headed into the streams and nearby rivers in New York City. This research experience allowed me to take kind of my classes and what I've learned at Columbia and really focus it on water related challenges which I've become really passionate about. The purpose of the study was to look at the landscape connectivity, pathogen prevalence, and population dynamics of white-footed mice and their effect on the distribution and location of black-legged ticks, otherwise known as deer ticks, on Staten Island. One of the most interesting discoveries during our study was finding the presence of Asian longhorn ticks on Staten Island. These ticks are invasive, reproduce asexually, and they don't have a known host preference. This was a troubling development for us because it was the first time that these ticks, which are native to China, had been discovered in New York City. The goal of my project is to develop a community visioning and outreach strategy for the Randalls Island Parks Alliance Park is Lab program, which is an ecology research program. Community visioning is a tool that can be used to engage stakeholders in developing a shared vision for the future. Because the Randalls Island community consists of a large group of diverse stakeholders with many different perspectives, it's important to have a strategy for them to work together and develop a shared vision for the park's activities moving forward. Walking in another shoes is basically an immersion study to map out the professional's understanding of peace, tolerance and uh, extremism in two religious schools in Indonesia, one in North Sumatra and the, the other one is in East Java. The objective of the study is basically to map out the issues of importance and the professional understanding of these values in the school community and the surrounding contextual uh, community of the school. In Indonesia, as the biggest Muslim population country, has has more than 28,000 religious schools, Islamic boarding schools, with more than 4 million students. It's important for the policymakers to really understand what kind of approach they, they need to apply when it comes to conducting a deradicalization or disengagement program. I became interested in environmental law generally because of the political climate we're faced with now. It seemed like that was the most um, feasible avenue of change and like avenue for forcing change. My research basically identified whether or not the United Kingdom has policies in place to require or um, incentivize land surveyors there to account for climate change in their surveys. Um, the answer is they're starting to but it's not yet uh, fully operational. Um, it definitely, that research could definitely inform how we analyze land surveyors here in the United States and the role that they possibly could play. My project looked at finding hazardous concentrations of lead in soil, both in Peru and New York City. The focus was trying to find a novel way to measure hazardous lead concentrations, which was something that local communities, especially that were impacted by mining industries, didn't have access to. Parents and community members would collect soil samples in this first row of A vials here, and then add three scoops of the soil to the 
this extraction solution, which simulates stomach acid. So then um, after an hour of being in the solution, the lead that comes off of the soil in solution is represents the bioaccessible or bioavailable lead. The idea being that this is the lead that would also come off if a child were to ingest soil. My project is about takes on Staten Island and uh, habitat fragmentation. So uh, in Staten Island, new houses are getting built and it's uh, separating the forest into multiple woods and deer going across people's property gets to these different forests and this is spreading ticks into people's backyards and they get contract Lyme disease from these ticks. I found this project because I'm pre-med in Sustev and this is like a perfect combination between the two. The biggest challenge we had was um, trying to get people to do the survey and like let us check their yard for ticks but we had good awareness through newspapers and like focus groups and then if we made an appointment with someone they usually could introduce us to neighbors and build trust in the community. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean and as a region we have historically been affected by weather related hazards. Storms, hurricanes, floods and droughts and landslides make up about 75% of all disasters within the region and damages from these events are about 95% of all impacts. I became interested in the role and utility of climate information and how that could help build disaster risk reduction and assist sustainable development process. Understanding sustainable development options is just as important there as it is anywhere else. So I think the input of the Earth Institute because of its experts and experience and through funding of research like mine can promote local knowledge and encourage an actionable research plan for the future of the Caribbean.